Hey what's up guys Tanmay for simple snippets and in today's video tutorial we are going to write a java program to check whether an integer is palindrome or not so this is going to be another practical program and we've covered quite a lot of basic practical programs in the previous video tutorials of this playlist so if you have missed those videos you can check it out and with that being said let's start off with today's topic so since it is going to be a practical program quickly open up your netbeans id and as you can see i have already opened mine so i would recommend that you program along with me for the best practice and this is the question that we are going to program for write a program to check whether an integer is palindrome or not so a number is palindrome if it is the same when written in reverse order so what do i mean so let's see a number 1 2 1 so if i write in reverse order that is from right to left i get the same number 1 2 1 right so these kind of numbers are palindrome numbers and the rest are not palindrome so that's what we are going to check for so another example would be 1 2 3 2 1 So if I start writing from right to left, that is one, two, three, two, one, right? So we get the same number. One more example would be one, one, two, two, one, one. So this is one more example. So these kind of numbers are special numbers known as palindrome, and this is the program that we're going to start off in today's topic. So let's start off with the program. So first we'll create a number. So we'll create an integer variable. I'll say int num, and let's hard code the number as one twenty one for now. you can also use a scanner variable or buffer reader variable to take input from the user but we still haven't yet discussed in detail how to take input from user in java programming because for that you'll need a little bit of knowledge of classes and objects and we still have to cover those topics so currently if you are following this entire playlist we are still at the basics okay moving ahead so this is our number now we want one more variable we are going to say in rev in rev you can say and we are going to say zero so this rev is going to hold the reverse number which we are going to calculate further in this program and lastly we are going to need a temporary variable which we are going to use in our calculations and we are going to say temp equals to num basically we are just going to use this in the end to just compare reverse number and temporary number so you'll understand why i use this later on when we proceed through this program so three variables would be more than enough for this program so let's start off with the while loop yes we are going to be using the while loop control statement which is a looping control statement and the reason why we're going to use a while loop is the while loop will help us iterate through this number and then we will be able to use some mathematical concepts to reverse this number and the reason why we are not using for loop is because we don't know the number of iterations required so the number can be four digit number five digit number and depending upon the length of number the number of iterations also increase of course you'll understand when we start off with the program so let me just first type the code so i'll say while in the condition i'm going to say while num greater than 0 which means that the while loop should execute till the number num that is 121 is greater than 0 i'll tell you why i'm doing this because once we start to dry run this entire program you'll understand what is happening step by step so the first step or the first statement inside the while loop is going to be rev is equal to rev star 10 now just follow along with me because right now you might not understand why i'm doing this we are using some mathematical concepts to reverse the number and you'll understand it when we actually dry run it so let me just first write down all the three statements the next statement i'm going to say is rev is equal to rev plus num mod 10 again just follow along with me i'll explain to you why i'm doing all this and lastly what i'm going to say is num is equal to num divided by 10 so these are the three statements required in the while loop now outside the while loop after the while loop has executed our rev number will be calculated of course we'll dry run it and then compare and see what exactly happens step by step but once the while loop ends we have to use a if else control statement which is a conditional control statement we have to say if rev equal equal to temp because temp has the num value and this num over here has changed its value so that's why we cannot use the num we have to use the temporary variable temp over here to compare it with the reverse value and if both of them are equal so you can see this double equal to is checking for the condition whether both these values are same if both are same it would mean that it's a palindrome and else it would mean that it is not a palindrome right okay so this rev is the reverse number and the temp is our original number which we stored in the num and then the num was transferred to this temp variable okay so let's first try to save this and let's try to run this and then i'll explain to you what exactly happens in the while loop so it's running over here you can see so there you go in the output we got palindrome which means 121 is a palindrome number and yes it is a palindrome because if we write it from right to left we get the same number as 121 let's try to give something which is not a palindrome i'll say 1 2 1 3 
if i run this it should print not palindrome okay i forgot to change the condition over here i should say not palindrome save this and run this and there you go you can see it is showing not palindrome now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say 1213 and again 121 so this is a palindrome number let's save this and run this so there you go you can see it is a palindrome if i say 11 it should again say palindrome yes it is a palindrome if i say 1122 one one again it should be a palindrome yes it is a palindrome and you can check n number of various different cases and our program will work perfectly right so what exactly is happening in the while loop that we are getting that reverse number so the while loop is specially just executed just to get or to calculate the reverse and not to check for the palindrome it is just to calculate the reverse of the number and we are using some mathematical concepts let's see what they, those are let me just change this to 121 and let me just open up a notepad so that we can dry run the code okay so let's start off with the dry running and by dry running i mean we will evaluate step by step what is happening in the individual variables so before the while executes we have num equals to 121 we have reverse equals to 0 and we have temp is equal to num which is also 121 okay now the while loop starts so first while loop checks the condition while num greater than 0 is num greater than 0 yes num is 121 which is greater than 0 which means that the while loop will execute correct okay so the first statement says rev is equal to rev star 10 so the assignment happens from rhs to lhs so this rev star 10 will be stored in this new rev variable so currently rev is 0 so 0 star 10 that is 0 multiplied by 10 will be 0 only right so rev would be 0 so this is step 1 okay so you can consider this as step 1 or iteration 1 so rev is 0 now the next line says rev is equal to rev plus num mod 10 okay so now again we are adding a new value into the rev variable so current value of rev is 0 so rev is equal to 0 plus what is this num mod 10 so the number variable or num variable is having 121 so 121 mod 10 will give us what will it will give us the remainder right because modulo operation always gives us a remainder so 121 mod 10 will give us 1 correct because that's the remainder it is going to happen or uh, because since 121 is not directly divisible by 10 it would leave us a remainder of 1 so the rev variable would be 0 plus 1 which is going to be 1 okay and the last step num is equal to num divided by 10 so 121 divided by 10 should give us 12.1 correct that's what we should have but since this is an integer variable now remember integer variable does not store the fractional part so what it will happen is it will truncate that fractional part which means that 121.1 that point 0.1 will not be stored num would be 12 only so 121 divided by 10 will give us num is equal to 121 divided by 10 should give us 12 and not 12.1 because it is an integer variable it will truncate this point 0.1 part getting me okay so this was step number one now step number two happens so again the condition is first checked is num greater than zero yes because num has now become 12 and it is still greater than 0 correct so again rev is equal to rev star 10 what is the current value of rev you can see rev's current value is 1 so 1 star 10 or 1 multiplied by 10 will give us 10 so now the value of rev has changed to 10 next statement says rev is equal to rev plus num mod 10 so we just updated the value of rev which was 10 now we are saying rev plus that is 10 plus num mod 10 so what is the value of num over here the latest value of num is 12 which was changed in the previous step right so 12 mod 10 will give us 2 right because again 12 is not directly divisible by 10 so it should give us the remainder of 2 so num mod 10 will give us 2 so 10 plus 2 ultimately will give us 12 right so the new value of rev is now become 12 okay lastly again we do num is equal to num divided by 10 so the num value is 12 correct so 12 divided by 10 should have 1.2 but since it is an integer it will only store the uh, the the part which is on the left hand side of the decimal point that is the whole part so num will only store 1 and not 1.2 okay so this was step number 2 now we are on step number 3 because num is still greater than 0 right num has become 1 but it is still greater than 0 so again rev is equal to rev star 10 what is the value of rev 12 so 12 into 10 will become 120 now rev is equal to rev plus num mod 10 so what is the current value of rev 120 so 120 plus 
num mod 10. Now num value is 1. So 1 mod 10 is going to give us 1 itself, right? Because 1 is not directly divisible by 10. So it is just going to give us the remainder. So 120 plus 1, which would give us 121. So now if you observe, we got our reverse number. So REV is for the reverse number, right? So this is REV that we've got. And now the new number, that is the last step, num is equal to num divided by 10 becomes, since num is 1, so 1 by 10 is going to be 0, right? It is actually 0 0.1, but since it only stores integer variable, that is it will not store fractional part, num will become 0. It should be 0 0.1, right? But it will be holding only 0 because it is not a float variable, it is an int variable. Okay, so now when the step 4 starts to happen, the condition is first checked, is num greater than 0? No, because num has become 0. So 0 cannot be greater than 0. It can be equal to 0, but cannot be greater than 0, right? So this is where the while loop stops. So step 4 doesn't happen. Okay. And now when the while loop is exited in the if block, we are checking is rev equal equal to temp. Okay. What was the last value of rev? 121. What was the num value initially at the very start of the program? 121. But after the while loop, num has become 0. So we cannot make comparison with num, num right? Because it has become 0. So that is the reason why we need a temporary variable to hold the value of num. And then in the if block, we're checking rev equal equal to temp. So this rev 121 is being compared with this 121 of temp. And since here it is a palindrome number, that's why the if block is true because rev is equal to temp. That's why system.out.println palindrome is printed. So this is what is happening behind the scenes in the while loop. And I hope you understood how we reverse the number. We use some basic concept of mathematics and we at every iteration what we were doing is we were dividing this num starting from the units place and then storing it in the rev variable and multiplying it by 10. So at every iteration the num value was being stripped starting from the right and rev was being built starting from the left. So initially num was 1 to 1 so this units value 1 was becoming revs hundreds value. Then we were multiplying the rev by 10 right. So that's why it was becoming 10. Then we stripped this 2 and then we said 10 plus 2. So it became 12 and then we multiplied 12 by 10 again. So it became 120 and lastly we stripped off this 1 and then we just added it with 120 to get the reverse value. So I hope now the entire crux of how to reverse a number is very clear. By the way, we also have some inbuilt functions which we can directly use to reverse any string or any number. But since we still have to cover the part of functions, we took or we created our own program to reverse a number and this is only applicable for integer numbers. This is not applicable for string or any other data type because then we cannot use those mathematical principles to reverse the number. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood this concept of finding palindrome. The main concept here, crux here is to actually reverse the number and later on use the if else block to just check the reverse number with the original number. And if you understood this program and if you found this helpful, please share this with your friends so that even they understand it properly. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe to this channel and I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.